December 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Amos chapters 3 and 4 from the Old Testament. Listen, you Israelites, to this message which the Lord is proclaiming against you. This message is for the entire clan I brought up from the land of Egypt. I have chosen you alone from all the clans of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your sins. Do two walk together without having met? Does a lion roar in the woods if he has not cornered his prey? Does a young lion bellow from his den if he has not caught something? Does a bird swoop down into a trap on the ground if there is no bait? Does a trap spring up from the ground unless it has surely caught something? If an alarm sounds in a city, do people not fear? If disaster overtakes a city, is the Lord not responsible? Certainly the Sovereign Lord does nothing without first revealing His plan to His servants, the prophets. A lion has roared, who is not afraid? The Sovereign Lord has spoken, who can refuse to prophesy? Make this announcement in the fortresses of Ashdod and in the fortresses in the land of Egypt. Say this, Gather on the hills around Samaria. Observe the many acts of violence taking place within the city the oppressive deeds occurring in it. They do not know how to do what is right. The Lord is speaking. They store up the spoils of destructive violence in their fortresses. Therefore, says the Sovereign Lord, an enemy will encircle the land. He will take away your power. Your fortresses will be looted. This is what the Lord says. Just as a shepherd salvages from the lion's mouth a couple of leg bones or a piece of an ear, so the Israelites who live in Samaria will be salvaged. They will be left with just a corner of a bed and a part of a couch. Listen and mourn the family of Jacob. The Sovereign Lord, the God who commands armies, is speaking. Certainly when I punish Israel for their covenant transgressions, I will destroy Bethel's altars. The horns of the altar will be cut off and fall to the ground. I will destroy both the winter and summer houses. The houses filled with ivory will be ruined. The great houses will be swept away. The Lord is speaking. Listen to this message, you cows of Bashan who live on Mount Samaria. You oppress the poor, you crush the needy. You say to your husbands, bring us more to drink. The sovereign Lord confirms this oath by his own holy character. Certainly the time is approaching when you will be carried away in baskets, every last one of you in fishermen's pots. Each of you will go straight through the gaps in the walls. You will be thrown out toward Harmon. The Lord is speaking. Go to Bethel and rebel at Gilgal rebel some more. Bring your sacrifices in the morning, your tithes on the third day. Burn a thank offering of bread made with yeast. Make a public display of your voluntary offerings, for you love to do this, you Israelites. The Sovereign Lord is speaking. But surely I gave you no food to eat in any of your cities. You lacked food everywhere you live. Still you did not come back to me. The Lord is speaking. I withheld rain from you three months before the harvest. I gave rain to one city but not to another. One field would get rain, but the field that received no rain dried up. People from two or three cities staggered into one city to get water, but remained thirsty. Still you did not come back to me. The Lord is speaking. I destroyed your crops with blight and disease. Locusts kept devouring your orchards, vineyards, fig trees, and olive trees. Still you did not come back to me. The Lord is speaking. I sent against you a plague like one of the Egyptian plagues. I killed your young men with the sword, along with the horses you had captured. I made the stench from the corpses rise up into your nostrils. Still you did not come back to me. The Lord is speaking. I overthrew some of you the way God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You were like a burning stick snatched from the flames. Still you did not come back to me. The Lord is speaking. Therefore, this is what I will do to you, Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, Israel. For here he is. He formed the mountains and created the wind. He reveals his plans to men. 
He turns the dawn into darkness and marches on the heights of the earth. The Lord, the God who commands armies, is his name. God, it, it's fascinating watching Judah and Israel, your chosen people, your, your special nation, act in a way that they feel like no matter what they do, because they were your chosen people, that they're fine. Uh, that they're in good with you that they're you know they're still tithing to you even though they're doing other things in other deities temples and the other idol temples they think they're okay because they're your chosen people i was thinking about this a lot when i was studying these uh, couple chapters well kind of all of amos talks about this we are your chosen people as well Uh, our names were written in the book of life before the worlds were created, those of us who are saved and going to heaven. And and yet, how many of us just do the bare minimum to get by? Uh, <laughs> you even laugh at Israel and Judah uh, in this reading, where you say, burn a thank offering of bread made with yeast. Make a public display of your voluntary offerings. You're really good at doing this. You really love doing this, don't you, Israelites? And I talk to people and like, well, you know, I go to church almost every Sunday. Um, I read, I read the Bible sometimes, you know, I pray to God when I need stuff or, or when, you know, kind of big decisions happen in my life. So I'm good. (laughs) And I think about my own life too, how I'm like, okay, well, I go to church a couple times a week and I read my Bible almost every day. And I pray lots to you and and I help your people and I disciple other people and and I go to seminary. And then there's those times where I literally coast. Um, I'm good. I've done all these things. It's almost like I I mentally see this chalkboard in my head with these like little tally marks uh, and I'm good to coast for a while. There's no place in the Bible, God, (laughs) where it says I get to coast. Uh, It says actually quite the opposite. So I find it interesting and fascinating watching Judah and Israel do exactly what we do today. Not making it right. Just, it's so amazing that human behavior back then was similar to human behavior today. Uh, That we honestly believe almost that we build up (laughs) uh, an advance here on earth and and we get to coast. We get to worship our other idols, whether that's money or, or drugs or sex or relationships or brand names or or whatever our idols are that we're also worshiping just like you were telling the Israelites yeah you can go on doing all these things that I told you were laws or are written in the Torah um, but they mean nothing to me in fact they actually mean less um, and you're going to be punished more for those things actually and I know better I'm in a position where I know better. God, I just ask that on those days, even those hours sometimes on certain days that I'm coasting, uh, that I've just kind of going about my worldly way. God, can I just ask that you come in and kind of kick my behind and get me going again and remind me why I'm even here? Um, The sovereign Lord that you are who created me and put me here on earth to do his will can you make those really obvious on those days where I'm just not getting it where I've checked out where I've made everything about me uh, where I want to do things my way the worldly way uh, instead (laughs) instead of the right way in the way that is so much better for me uh, your plan for my life and that when fabulous things happen in my life I praise and worship you and thank you and when things I consider not so good happen in my life, I praise and worship and thank you. And when life is common, I praise and worship and thank you because everything is intentional from you. Everything ha- is happening for a purpose or reason. Sometimes only you know, most of the time only you know, uh, and the times that I do, do know and that you've allowed me to see. It's just been wondrous and amazing and gigantic. Thank you, God, for your reminders of how amazing and incredible you truly are and reminding us our our place in that uh, and what our priorities should be i pray all this in your glorious son's name jesus christ amen